Hi, let's talk about the rate law. Pretty cool that you're at this point in chemistry. Good job. Um, so here is our rate law. It's rate equals K times the concentration of A raised to the M uh, times the concentration of B raised to the N. Now, where did that A and B come from? This is going to be our generic equation. Uh, notice the lowercase letters are going to represent the coefficients. So those are your numbers, like one mole, two moles. I could have one mole of A plus two moles of B. So my little A would be one, my little B would be two. Uh, the capital letters, those represent our chemical species. So they're either going to be our elements or our compounds. Chemical species. So really important in rate law. What I want you to notice is that yes, we have our chemical species that's going to be concentration of A, concentration of B, but notice these are called orders, the M and the N, they are not the coefficients. This is one of the few times in chemistry that we don't use the coefficients, super important. And it's easy for students to mix this up because when we do equilibrium, we do use the coefficients as the exponents. So be careful, really, really big note. Let's put down that this M, and N, those are called orders. Um, and then two notes on this, they are not coefficients. They're not the coefficients from the chemical formula, the chemical equation. And number two, super important, they have to be experimentally determined. So must be experimentally determined. Now I have several videos on the math for this, how to work it out with algebra, how to work it out with mental math, and then how to work it out with molecularity. If you don't know how to find those orders, watch those videos under the uh, rate playlist. Big takeaway though, you'll never be able to look at a chemical reaction and just write down M and N. You have to have some sort of data. You have to have some sort of data. Now, rate, remember, rate is going to be our concentration, let's see, I'm going to actually write it out. Concentration over time. So your unit on this will be molarity per some unit time, usually seconds, sometimes minutes, it can even be hours, days, years, depending on the reaction. Usually seconds though, because seconds is our SI base unit for time. Um, so it's going to be molarity versus time. K. This is really important. And let me just apologize for chemistry. There are several times that we use K as our symbol. You can't get this mixed up. This K is a lowercase K. If you wanna write that down, lowercase, and is what's called the rate constant. The rate constant. <clears throat> So you are always going to be looking for some sort of clue that this is rate constant and not equilibrium, okay? Or not Kelvin temperature, that this is rate constant. Now, the great importance of K is that it adjusts units. This is going to adjust units. I have an entire video on the rate constant adjusting units. So interesting, in the last 20 years of AP tests that I have looked at, um, every time a student had to find K, the value of K, the numeric value of K, uh, every time except for one, they also had to find the unit. And the unit was always one point, always one point. So you'll want to know how to determine units. Watch that video on the rate constant. So yes, this will be a number, but the true power and value of K is going to be adjusting those units because this right here will, can be different for every reaction based on those orders. Um, and when you multiply all of this, it has to equal molarity per second. K, those units are going to change to match this particular rate law so you always get molarity per second, molarity per second. So that's the importance there. And then one more reminder, I'm going to take my A and B over here. These are going to be the concentration of, super important, reactants, okay? It's always the reactants that are going to determine the rate of your reaction. It's how quickly those reactants are going to hit. It's going to be that proper orientation, enough energy to change from reactants to products. 
Um, so really, really careful. These are going to be the concentrations of the reactant. Now I'm going to plant a seed right now in your mind. This is to contrast equilibrium. When we do equilibrium, we use both reactants and products. And once you learn your unit on rate and your unit on equilibrium, inevitably, I'll have students start to marry both of those together because they're similar symbols, but there's still distinct differences. So in this vial inside your brain, you're going to have a couple of really important um, demarcations. First one, those um, exponents are experimentally determined. They are not coefficients. They're not the lowercase here. They're not the numbers. Second, we only use reactants. We only use reactants when we're doing rate law. And third, the importance of K is adjusting units. And you'll want to know how to adjust those units. So overall, this rate law, what it does is it gives us the information um, to know how individual reactants impact the overall rate of the reaction. So there you have it. Rate law overview, lots of supporting videos to help you as you start moving through the math on this. All right, thanks, have a good day.